We've officially owned this legend car now for just over a year. We've been making videos on it since January of this year. And we've put a ton of effort into the car just to make it race ready for this year since it hasn't been on a track since 2019. This time last year, we ended up purchasing this car because our local track down south in Pueblo closed down and we didn't really know what we wanted to do, but we knew that they raced these cars down there and they also raced these cars up north in Denver. So we decided to pull the trigger on buying one and that got me thinking what it actually takes to get one of these cars and to get on the track the simplest way you physically can. Now this video is more so geared towards the people who just wanna get into Legends car racing as fast as possible and aren't really too worried about speed or being at the front of the pack the second that they start racing since you know when you're a rookie in any type of car you tend to be a little bit slower unless your equipment is just that much better than everyone else's and you already have a basic knowledge but that's kind of the first thing I want to go over for these cars is whenever you decide that you want to go into these cars as a race car you need to get a basic understanding of them. Now when I say you need to get a basic understanding of these cars, what I'm more so talking about is just what these cars are really capable of doing. Primarily, these cars are capable of running across three different disciplines of racing right now that are sanctioned by the sanctioning body that builds these cars. What's available right now is asphalt oval, dirt oval, road course racing. The setup on these can obviously be changed to accommodate each of those racing types. And so it's your responsibility to figure out what you have locally available. Easiest way to do that is to go to the iNEX series website, go to the events drop down, click on that local event schedule, and then go ahead and select your state and that'll tell you what speedways or what racetracks in your area race these cars, what surface type they are, whether they're asphalt, oval, road course, or dirt, like I mentioned earlier. And that's when you can really start your journey into these cars because there's a lot to learn right away. It's basically drink it from a fire hose if you ever want to get into these, but once you start racing, the learning gets a little bit easier. Now once you find out what tracks are available locally and what they're racing on, and if you have a preferred surface that you want to race on, it's very important to just go out to those tracks, buy a pit pass, go look around at the cars whenever they're running there, and try to get to know a few of the drivers, ask them plenty of questions. I'm sure a lot of them are, are happy to answer a lot of them. Just be careful and be courteous. You know, you don't want to bum rush them and try and ask them a million questions while they're physically working on the car, getting ready for qualifying or whatnot. Like, just use common sense on when you can approach them and start asking questions. A lot of them are, are pretty easily approachable and have no problem answering questions. Now physically going to the racetrack is gonna do a couple of things for you. First of all, you're gonna to get to meet all the drivers out there, kind of see their attitudes and their driving styles and whatnot, so you can kind of get a handle on that. And you can just kind of watch the flow of how the track operates there and you know how they run these cars, whether or not they uh, follow the rule book 100% to the T, which obviously they should, but sometimes they're a little more lenient on a couple things or maybe they have a couple special rules. Like I know for us, one of our rules that I touched on a couple videos ago was getting the safety wire installed on the drain plug for our motor. Obviously different places have different requirements so it's important for you to go to those tracks and figure out what they are before you even decide to do this. Once you get a basic understanding of what track and what surface you're gonna be racing on, you're pretty much ready to just go ahead and buy a car. Now there's two main ways that you can go about buying a car. You can either go through one of the US Legend Cars dealers through the dealer network that they have. All you have to do is go to the US Legend Cars website, click the Start Racing drop down, find yourself a dealer, uh, preferably local, but you know, for us here in Colorado, we have Leary. We, Mike's a pretty good guy. He's, he's pretty knowledgeable in the Legend Cars and is very helpful. Or if you don't wanna go through one of the dealers because a brand new car right now is just about 19 grand. You can uh, look up on Facebook Marketplace. There's a couple of groups out there. There's the Just Legends Facebook group and the Legends Parts and Cars for Sale Legend Car group. Both of those have pretty good deals all the time. Just know that on the cheaper end, you know, anywhere between six and eight grand, you're typically gonna get yourself either a 1250 car or a car that's, you know, pretty much on the verge of needing rebuilt. So sometimes it's better to just buy a brand new car. I know it's hard to swallow the price tag of it, but that way when it comes from the factory, everything's where it's supposed to be. Nothing's missing, nothing's changed. There's no driver preferences put into it. Obviously you'll have to put in a setup or find someone who will do a setup for you. 
but at least that would be better than buying a car you know nothing about on Marketplace and not knowing what's missing and having to scramble to try and get everything and spending the same amount of money anyway on one of those cars. However, that doesn't mean all Facebook Marketplace cars are bad. You know, this one here was actually bought off of Facebook Marketplace and while we pretty much went through the whole car anyway for ourselves, that was more of just a familiarization test for us and just kind of getting used to the car and all the stuff that we can change quickly at the track or all the stuff that we're going to need more time if we ever destroy it during a wreck or whatever. But Facebook Marketplace can be a very, you know, up and down place. It's not always the best place, but if it's hard to swallow the price tag of a new car, that's probably your best bet. So I'll leave that one up to you. Once you finally went around and purchased a car, whether it be a brand new car or from Facebook Marketplace, there, you still need to go through and do all of the safety updates required at each track that you're gonna be racing at, for instance. The rule book states that you need an SA 2015 helmet at the minimum and an approved head and neck restraint, which is inside this bag. We've got our, our SA 2020 helmet as well as our Hans device. We've got our fireproof suit in the bottom half of the bag as well. A couple of other things you may need is one of these little yellow radio receiver units for race control to be able to let you know, you know, when there's a wreck, caution, when you're stopping on the track, or when the green flag's coming out, how many laps are left. And our track also requires these transponders. This particular one is a MyLaps transponder, but there's a couple of different brands. One of the more popular ones that everyone runs is a Westhold. Our track doesn't allow Westholds, we have to run the MyLaps, so. Those are just kind of a couple of incurring costs on top of it, you know. Same thing with our seat belts here. They're hanging out the window. These are SFI rated belts. They recommend in the rule book to change them every two years and there's actually a tag on them that have an expiration, but it's not a requirement to switch those out. If you're running at an INEX sanctioned track, you will need a membership to run. And if you want regional points, you're gonna need to run the stickers that they require you to run. You know, make sure you have your numbers and everything. But once you have that membership, you're pretty much ready to show up to whatever track you decide you're gonna show up to locally and uh, give it your first test drive. Now your first track day in these cars could be a little bit daunting, and quite a bit intimidating. I know it was for me, especially if you have never raced a car ever. If this is your first race car, then it's gonna be a huge, steep learning curve, but don't be afraid of it. Just take your time. It's okay to be slow. You're not coming out here to try and earn your spot in the NASCAR truck series or you know, any of the top three or try and make a living on any of this, you know, typically you're gonna spend your 30, 35 buck pit pass. You're gonna show up, you're gonna race. You probably won't be very fast or maybe you will. I don't know, everyone's different, but it's okay not to be fast. Like right now, we're halfway through our season and we're still the last of the group of cars. So I'm not too worried about our first season. You shouldn't be too worried about yours either. It, like I said, it's a learning curve. Everyone's gonna be different. The payout's not gonna be very much if your track pays out at all for finishing last or second to last or whatever. Typically from 10th on back, the price isn't gonna change. So you'll be making the same no matter where you finish, probably for the next at least year until you get a solid grasp of the car and start making your progress forward. But as of right now, I feel like that's probably the simplest way to get into these cars and get on a track. It's not gonna be the best way. I, I highly, highly recommend taking the car completely apart if you have the chance and just kind of going through everything, familiarizing yourself with the car, especially if you've never driven a race car before or have ever been around these cars because while these cars are super simple, there's a lot of pieces to them. So just make sure you take your time, try and learn as much as you can in your first couple years. And then maybe later you'll start winning your main events and and start, you know, recognize, getting recognized for the stuff that you do and whatnot, so. Hopefully this is a pretty decent guide for most of you who wanna get into the sport. I know it's pretty intimidating at first to wanna get into these cars not knowing anything, but, you know, I'll leave all the links down in the description of US Legend Cars and iNEX Series and all those websites that you need to go to. There's plenty of articles on there, plenty of read-ups you could do trying to familiarize yourself with these cars as, as quickly as you can is gonna be the best way to streamline your performance in these cars. So, 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Appreciate you guys watching. Hope to catch you in the next one.